Hello and welcome to this presentation on the LDO design and simulation. Uh, we will use Altium Designer uh, built-in mixed uh, signal spice simulator. We will design a basic LDO circuit there. But what you can see at the moment on the screen is the basic LDO architecture. Well, this is not as basic as the second one I will describe in a second. However, uh, we can start from this one. I will just grab a screen so I can uh, my comments on this. So the LDO is built from uh, uh, three major blocks, the power stage, the error amplifier, and uh, the reference voltage, which is tied to a non-inverting, uh, sorry, to an uh, inverting, uh, this is an inverting input of the error amplifier. The error amplifier can be just treated as a operational amplifier. So if you want to build an LDO with discrete circuits, you will need to have this volt reference voltage, the uh, operational amplifier, uh, as well as the PMOS output stage. There are some other um, blocks in this block diagram, but we will not focus on those uh, in this video. There is also built in to the chip, to this uh, ADP1714, uh, there are two resistors that set the output voltage because let's now focus how this closed loop system, because if we tie the V out to a sense uh, with a, a, a copper trace on the PCB, how this circuit will behave. So let's now, let's start from an uh, assumption that is uh, that the error amplifier uh, inverting and non-inverting, inverting and non-inverting input, in theory, the voltage between those uh, inputs, uh, it's zero volts. So here we will have a zero volts zero volts. So if you want to have a zero volts here, then the output should be driven such that the PMOS transistor uh, is conducting so much current. There's of course a load here to the load that the voltage drop, uh, sorry, that the output voltage, that the V out, which is here, which is on the output, that the V out divided by the R1 and R2 is exactly half a volt. Let's now assume that R1 and R2 are exactly the same value. Let's let's make it 10 kilo ohms, 100 kilo ohms, it doesn't matter. But, but the ratio is uh, 1 to 2. So the voltage uh, on the sense pin, let's assume it Oh, I cannot assume one volt. Let's assume here 0.5, because if we have a zero volt between the inverting and non-inverting input, it means that here we need to have 0.5 volts when the loop is closed. So if here we have a 0.5 or any voltage reference that you pick, that you select for your design, then the output voltage would be higher by the division ratio. It would be set by the division ratio of R1 and R2. If those are the same value, so if, it, if R1 is equal to R2, then the division ratio is of course one to two. So here we will have a one volt if we connect this like this. So we will have a one volt here. And okay, uh, the output voltage uh, precision or the thermal drift is set by the voltage reference and the error amplifier offset bias currents uh, and and thermal coefficients of the bias current and the offset but that can be taken into account during uh, the calibration uh, during the calibration or if you want to have a very precise um, output uh, voltage then you need to take this into consideration um, however there are on the market quite good uh, operational amplifiers and voltage reference that will probably meet your needs regarding the thermal stabi stability or the precision of the output voltage. Okay, so uh, and here we have of course the PMOS. PMOS transistor is uh, usually selected for the LDO. The, the drop on the PMOS can be as low as the current on the output because here we have the load so the current low, uh, the the load, um, the current of the load times the RDS on, because as long as the operational amplifier can close the loop, so drives this voltage, or this voltage, because this is the voltage between the gate uh, and, and source 
as low as um, as it's required by the loop to set the output voltage to one volt then we will have a really good regulation by regulation we can uh, i mean that if you change the resistance resistance at the output or the load the voltage will not vary um, or vary in very tiny amount that can be just skipped or um, it's negligible uh, okay um, what else uh, let's now jump into the second one the second circuit I have here and it's exactly the same the same situation let me also just grab a screen and here we also have an error amplifier we have uh, the uh, resistive resistor network to set the output voltage we also have a uh, feed forward capacitor to compensate the phase and frequency response to make it stable because it's not so obvious that um, uh, LDO design um, can be stable in all conditions there are some conditions related with the um, ESR of the uh, capacitors that you connect to the output and even some chips they specify the resistor value that should be placed here uh, or not not exactly placed here but the ESR of the capacitor if it's zero then you will probably see some um, instabilities or over undershoots so this capacitor is built into the circuit and let's now just also examine uh, how the negative feedback loop uh, loop works in the circuit so if the voltage at the output is rising up the voltage on the feedback node here inside the circuit also rises up this goes into a non-inverting input so the voltage from non-inverting input is also rising up when this voltage is rising up then the output of the error amplifier also gets higher and higher thus closing and uh, the PMOS stage when the PMOS uh, transistor is uh, getting closed or con starts to conduct less and less current the output voltage with a given load gets lower and lower so when when we get lower and lower voltages then the output the drain uh, sorry the gate voltage gets also down so the MOSFET is forced to conduct more current because this is a PMOS PMOS here okay okay let's now jump directly into Altium Designer here we have a basic LDO structure we have the input voltage, we have the power stage, uh, on the PMOS we have the error amplifier built on an old LM358. Uh, uh, we have the reference voltage 1.23, we have the resistors that set the output voltage and here is the equation that sets the output voltage. It applies to let's say 99% of, uh, of the LDO I'm aware of. <laughs> Probably uh, maybe there, there, there exists some LDOs that have a different output voltage. However, I doubt it. But uh, yeah, that, uh, that should be also a check in the data sheet. We have the load and of course there are some components which we'll, we will not discuss in this video. Uh, stability measurements and step response. First of all, let's see if this circuit works as intended. Let's do the verification of the of, of the schematic. Okay, it passed with success. Uh, we will use, of course, the trans transient simulation. Let's run it. I have everything set up here. Oh, okay, but I need to open this in a new window. Sorry, sorry for that inconvenience. And let's just share the screen. like this fine okay the output voltage uh, with this resistor's value is set to 3.6285 volts let's measure let's verify if this is true i have a yellow trace here which is the voltage of the net v out the cursor is enabled and we have six 3.6282 there is a offset of the error amplifier that probably shifts this um, output voltage a bit oh it's to only like 300 microvolts we can just skip that at the moment <coughs> and the output current at the 3.6 ohm load 
which is here, should be about one amp. Is it about one amp? Yes, it is. See, it's uh, one amp. Good, close enough. One amp. And what we also we can also observe the V drive, which is the gate uh, uh, source to gate voltage. And not this one. Where is the V drive? V drive is here. And the V drive is 1.13 volts. So the error amplifier set this uh, voltage level to 1.13. And the gate in this case is five volts minus, uh, this is 10 ohm, we can just treat it as a short circuit comparing to 100. So here we have 1.13, here we have five, so it's about 3.87 volt, 3.87 uh, volt on the gate required to conduct the current of one amp. Let's now reduce the, not reduce, increase the load resistor 10 times to 36. Let's run the simulation again and let's see if we have exactly the same voltage at the output. Oh, we have some overshoot here, but that would be addressed in a different video. The V out is 3 point. It's exactly the same as before. The V drive got higher because now we need much less current at the output. So the MOSFET does, does not have to be uh, forced to conduct uh, more than 100 milliamps, obviously. And from its uh, characteristics, you can actually read out the uh, required typical gate voltage for, for to conduct 100 milliamps. And we can also, uh, what we can see, uh, the current, the current. That's the last thing it's, that's missing here. We have 100 milli, milliamps at the output. Uh, let's just change, just to have some, let's say, experiment. The output, uh, the reference voltage to one point, I don't know, 1.1 volt. And let's see how this will affect the output voltage. Because as I said, the stability, the thermal coefficient of the output voltage is also dependent on the re internal reference or your external reference for your circuit. This is quite powerful LDO, one ampere, probably we can go even higher. I will, uh, I will provide you some details uh, in the next video. However, at the moment, let's just now focus on the change in the voltage reference. So the output voltage should also change. It's now lower because we we have lowered the reference voltage. So the same would be with the current now. It's like 90, 90 milliamps. Okay, I think that concludes the LDO design. The first video about the possibility to regulate the output voltage with respect to uh, and the re resistive network and the internal voltage regulator. And as you can see, the output voltage does not depend on the current, of course, in certain limits. Thank you for your attention. Have a great day.